right, guys. So since we have enough for a quorum, we will call to order. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? All right. Uh, approve the minutes of Monday, April 17th. Is there any discussion on the minutes? All right, hearing none, so moved. Is there any board correspondence? Not for me. Are there any public comments? All right, hearing none. Reports to the board, the, to you, Jamie. We're gonna move right along to that. All right, so you have my report in hand. I'm just going to uh, give a real brief, just couple of legislative things. There's a lot of exciting things happening that were in the report. We're really excited. The agency, I just wanted to highlight two things. The agency of education was out at um, the White River Unified District on Friday looking at our community schools grant, and then they are out in Rochester Stockbridge tomorrow looking at some of our literacy work and our, 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 our work in around our primary grades um, and work around the science of reading. So we're excited about that. So I just wanted to highlight those two things. The otherwise um, legislative update, universal meals got through. Um, it's going to be within the ed fund. Um, and, and then otherwise, everything else we talked about, nothing was really actionable, right? So in regards to the bills we have been talking about around Carson v. Macon, that died in set of ed. They didn't even really take it up. The bill that got out of the House that some folks spoke, I know board members wrote supporting, um, the Senate Ed Committee really didn't discuss it once it got there. Um, and then uh, the other bill that we are still awaiting, I haven't seen that the governor has signed, is that they did extend PCB testing an additional two years and then provided 100% coverage around abatement if schools were to um, find that they had elevated PCB levels. And again, um, that bill, I haven't been able to confirm yet that the governor has signed that bill. And there was some talk that that one could possibly face a veto. So um, I need to go on the, the, the website for the legislature and look at the governor's timestamps and then I'll be able to give you an update on when those things are signed, and I can send an email out to the full board letting you know when the actions are taken. Um, and then the other one is the early, uh, remember we talked a lot about pre-K and four-year-olds, those programs offering full-day pre-K, trying to get a 1.0 average daily membership because we do educate them full days, five days a week. And the House had discussed that. I think they quickly realized that that wasn't going to be something that was going to be uh, palatable. Um, as far as um, reconciling that adjustment with the Senate. And so they went ahead and focused on providing subsidy for um, child care, but didn't touch anything to do with public school funding around pre-K, which um, was too bad. And so really a lot of these things that we talked about and that were in uh, the legislature really did not. Um, the Senate, I would say it's the farthest apart I've seen the Senate and the House on many bills in a very long time. So we'll see if any of these get picked back up next year. And I'll entertain any questions folks may have. Bill? Yeah, um, Jamie, in your report, you talked about finalizing our plans to create a maker space at the Bethel campus that will be accessible to both our community and students from across the WRBSU uh, as a learning lab. Could you uh, fill us in on what's this all about? It sounds great. Yeah, so uh, as part of, remember, the White River Valley Middle School was a recipient of the Community Schools Grant two years ago. Yep. And so that work now is starting. It took, it, it, it's, the grant was written in that it was focused on the middle school, then was going to expand out to the high school. We've actually started expanding already in year two across the SU like having our community conversations, things of that nature. And then the third year, the grant is focused on SU-wide work around how do we bring community, partner with community, get more community into our schools, and then provide more opportunities for our students to get out into the community. And so um, 
Through that work, we've had some educators along with Onda Adams visit the generator, which I did link in, um, a link into my board report around what the generator is about um, up in Burlington that's actually off-site, uh, this concept around a community-based learning space that provides hands-on experiential learning for kids, right? But is done in a community setting where you're you're partnering student learning with community. And so what we're looking to do is host a space like that in the White River Valley Middle School. And we receive funding to put in um, things like 3D printers, laser, right? Cutter. Cutter. Thank you, Ray. There's some technology that we're going to have in place there that kids can then use. With the idea being that it would support pathways learning, but also support things like our science and math teachers, for example, yeah. that they could bring their classes into the makerspace and have applicable learning. So the exciting thing is we're looking to launch this um, at the Bethel School this coming summer. We believe we're going to have enough community school funding then to support learning spaces like this in all of our middle schools and possibly our high school so that we could have maker spaces at Newton, a maker space. Of course, space is more challenging in some buildings than others. Sarah's smiling, but ideally having a maker space in all three middle schools and in our high school. Wow. It's, this will be, will we getting federal funding for another year or is it continue beyond this? Yeah. The community, community schools grant is funded at 250 a year for three years so we have another 250,000 next year through the community school grant um, and then part of why the agency was out here was to do an assessment around like what might we need for sustainability purposes around further funding that grant um, we were the largest recipients when we received that that grant so looking at for sustainable ability purses, how do we continue to pursue it? The other thing we're looking at for grant funding, because we've leveraged some of this money to start after school clubs up for our middle school, is that we are up for another 21 century grant funding um, for the SU that grants up at the end of next year. And the Agency of Education has been supportive of us pursuing 21C funds to expand our programming through our middle schools to continue to support our after-school club work that we've been doing um, at the White River Valley Middle School and hope to expand again to First Branch and provide some more opportunities at the Newton Middle School. Wow, that sounds exciting, thank you. All right, anything else for Jamie, guys? All right, Honda. Okay, thank you. Um, in my report uh, this month, you saw updates on where we are with assessment. Uh, both locally and statewide, uh, as well as we sort of um, kind of hurtle towards the finish line on this year year long work of proficiency um, across all our content areas. Uh, I've been getting updates on on that and reviewing all those documents. Um, so I'm happy to take any. And then there's a report on the academic report. I can take any questions on the on my main report. Questions, guys. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah. So, are we talking about the um, the test results at this point? Is that the question you're asking? If we had any questions, or sure, we can talk Am about I that. On the yeah. same page. Okay, a couple. First of all, in your um, cover sheet on that, you mentioned three different testing programs. You talked. Uh, the first one has to do with. Um, um, uh, the, the TMP um, that is what we're utilizing right now to measure the performance of our students uh, K through K through eight, eight. right? Right. Then you mentioned D I B E L S Desbels end of the year assessment for K through two students, and is and so I wanted to get a sense of what that's what that's trying to measure that um, um, a TMP isn't measuring. Um, put that in kind of context. And is it measuring, you know, 
math, reading, and science or what. And then you mentioned um, VCAP, which uh, we had a phenomenal, sounded like implementation of that. Um, and that's a state um, measurement tool. So could you just kind of how those relate? It seems like the first two are helping us figure out how our kids are doing and what we need to do to get them to move forward. And the VCAP was basically the state's assessment of our progress. Um, uh, is that about it or uh, help me here? Sure, sure. Thank you, Bill. Uh, and I do, I, I have worked really hard not to include acronyms that I haven't defined, but I think as we get towards the end of the year, I, I forget to redefine them also when we have new members. So thank you for the reminder. So correct the benchmark assessment right now that we're using in kindergarten through eighth grade is track my progress that measures both English language arts and math. And those are the results that you saw in, you know, after October and January. So we're looking again, right. those now. DIBL stands for the Dynamic Indicators of Basic Early Literacy, mm -hmm. and it's an, um, a series of one-minute measures on foundational literacy skills. Um, and that we, this is what we have implemented new this year through um, our, with using our literacy interventionists who have been in a pretty intensive professional um, learning course with me or I'm taking, I'm taking alongside them uh, on how to use this and then also use different instructional tools to really improve our literacy instruction for kids. So um, that is, we are using that with all of our K-2 students universally and then um, in some cases with grades all the way up to six um, with interventionists if they were seeing students and wanted to use that as an additional tool. Um, and then you're right, the VT cap is the Vermont Comprehensive Assessment Program that is the state summative that um, we are in the initial year of it. Uh, I would like to think that it could be helpful, I think, at this uh, in, in measuring how our students do and using that information. I think given that we will not see any sort of results until um, at least August, at this point, I don't know how helpful it will be in this coming year, um, but hopefully as they are able to iron out any of the challenges with reporting and being able to move up that reporting window we could have the information sooner and it could help us um, prepare for the next year and see where our students are and how we want to start the year off and what do we want to make sure that we have in terms of instructional um, focuses for those students in different grade levels. But at this point, I don't, I don't think that one is as helpful to us as the other two uh, in meeting our students' needs. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sounds like track my progress is right away. Before we get on to the longitudinal, um, if I may, um, the, SU results, I compared them with the uh, RSED results, Rochester Stockbridge, and they were, as you, you would think, they're different. And got me thinking about um, our six different districts. Um, do they all march to the same drummer relative to, uh, like uh, uh, Rochester Stockbridge uses bridges for their elementary math programs? And they use um, uh, direct instruction for for um, for reading and spelling and are all our districts using the same tools or not and because the reason I ask is we have different results and I'm curious about the analysis are the results are based on what and one of the questions I have is it are they based uh, are the results based on different programs that we're using in math and in English uh, language arts. So are we all on the same, do they all get all six, all school, elementary schools have the same programs or do we have two or three that we're utilizing and measuring at this point? So Bill, I'll field this actually, because sure. I actually have, I made this decision. This, this came from the superintendent's office. So what I have said since I've started here is that we were not gonna mandate a one size approach for what instructional tools we use as an SU because as I toured here and as the board interviewed me three years ago, it was clear that there was a desire for some local decision-making around teaching, teachers and principals making informed decisions around what instructional tools they wanted to use. And a reminder, like our curriculum meets our 
speaks to the ends that we want our kids to meet and achieve at. Things like DI or bridges are the instructional tools we may use to get there. And so what we have done as an SU is say that districts have to settle on the same instructional tool. And so in mathematics right now, we have two instructional tools, bridges and envisions being used in our elementary schools. And one of the pluses I think of that is it has allowed us to start to monitor data of our student achievement. Um, and be able to start to compare some of that across those districts. So we have two districts using Envisions, and then the rest of our districts are using Bridges. And then in Literacy, Onda has been working with principals and teachers to make certain that we are selecting research-based tools um, to address um, the science of reading in phonics and phonemic awareness. And Onda can go into which of those tools we're using currently universally. But again, what we have said as an SU is, that as a district, you have to choose the same instructional tool and that it has to be research-based. Uh, and I'm a, <laughs> I won't even go back to my prior career, but um, we had little city halls in Boston uh, because each neighborhood was a little different and um, that was quite successful. The reason I'm asking the question is we've got some good data now. And the key data that I look at is annual progress rate in both math and in reading. And it seems to me that um, we don't have much time to reach our goal of 2025. And if you look at the numbers of those using bridges and those using Envision and those, those using DI versus something else, um, something may or may not pop out. But it seems to me that I like your guidance, but if it's clear that one methodology is better than another, it seems to me it's beholden to us to be aware of it and make a conscious decision why we wouldn't move more quickly to a more universal methodology if that of the data shows that. If it doesn't, that's something else. But the reason I ask is the board does not have that data, nor your analysis. And my, my request is that at some future meeting, we have a sense of that going forward. Um, we're making tremendous gains. And if there's a, a laggard results based on a methodology, then the question I would ask is, um, should we move it along to another methodology or more training, whatever the case is? Yeah. I, the weeds, but... No, I appreciate that, Bill. I would want to have that be the sentiment of the board because that is certainly not the direction I was given from the board when I was hired or from my local district boards that they wanted a one size fits all approach to instructional tools. So I would need better direction from the full board about whether that's a desire. Is it, so it's been several, um, more than a decade since I've been in the classroom, but, uh, but, um, when I was there, uh, one method didn't fit everybody. Is that still a, a accurate assessment or not? Well, Anna can certainly jump in. I mean, what I would say is, is that we try to select teaching tools so that there's a predictable scope and sequence for kids, right? And what we also try to say to teachers is, we also trust your expertise. And so what I would say is that we want folks to implement these tools with fidelity. But I also think, like we talked about a menu of interventions, the approach that we use for kids has to be personalized and individualized. And so you're right, Sarah, I would say that I don't think that a one size always necessarily meets every kid, right? Hopefully it universally meets 80% of our kids. And that's sometimes why we have interventions and different approaches to gap fill. And that's why we have a menu of interventions. Um, and so, you know, what I would say too about comparing district to district right now is I would also say that we are all in a different place around implementation with what we are currently using with fidelity and so some schools have been implementing an approach with fidelity longer than other schools and so i would worry about making universal like significant decisions on what the best program is right now because we're pretty early in an implementation phase in some of our districts thank you thank you all right Anything else, Sonda? 
All right, guys, thanks. Great feedback. Um, and Tara. Good evening, everyone. You have my report, and I will answer any questions that you may have. I outline a couple different areas in this report, along with providing the budget overview for all the districts and then your quarter three projections. Any questions for Tara? All right, thank you, Tara. They let her off easy. Uh, Tara, do you want to just highlight anything on the projection? What? Did I skip you? Still trending to a surplus. So really, I, the only adjustments I made since the last projection where I put in a few items in the area of overspending where we'd make it, we'll have to make adjustments, um, which some of it we'd already gone over as far as new teacher assessments, copy releases, um, and then in the advertising. So those are really the only areas that changed in this projection. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, hi, uh, Tara, I'm looking at the second page of the fiscal year uh, 23 projections. And I'm looking at the second page of it all. And I'm looking at the last three lines, summary of financial operations, 20, um, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Um, I'm assuming 22 is gonna show up when you have that information. So oh, it must've got cut off on my print. It was on there, Bill, sorry. Well, maybe I printed it out incorrectly. So I apologize for that, Tara. I didn't mean to do that. Um, help me here. Why would fiscal year 19 and 20 be, have the same number? Is that, that a was one of our funds that we had what? to do further um, clarification on. That's why we had the same amount. That was our what we call um, Fund 12, which is our shared funding. So when we have positions that are being held at the supervisory <laughs> and we bill back the districts for those positions, that yep. is the fund where that's allocated from. So there was a surplus in that fund that we cleaned up in 22. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. Thank you, Tara. Um, and I skipped over Annette, so <laughs> it's Annette's turn now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Uh, so in the special education department, we're just working hard to uh, wrap up the school year and plan and prep uh, for the next school year. Um, so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to attain those. All right, any questions for Annette? All right, Annette, that was easy peasy. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and Ray. Great. <coughs> I'm going to bring up my report and would be happy to field uh, any questions in person or virtually. Bill? Yeah, I want to again congratulate you and your team uh, at each school to, um, to be prepared and uh, to handle the new uh, VCAP testing protocol and, and, and all the, uh, the computerization and that going on. And it sounds like by your report that we were one of, one of the best in that. And also that sounds like our results are gonna be pretty darn good too. Um, my question is that you indicated with modesty that you, we, the SU used uh, federal funding to help, the way I read it, upgrade, replace um, our uh, technology equipment from computers to whatever else you want to call it. And that helped us be prepared and to uh, handle the, the VCAP um, first year rollout. And I wanted to, it seems to me that's a great example. And Jamie, you've used that before where you were, we're trying to use federal monies to help build our capacities going forward, not in a dependency way, but in a way that 
um, can allow us to have better results and possibly more efficiently provided. So um, is that basically what we've got here? Yeah, that's right, Bill. Uh, so these numbers in the report are from last Thursday. As of midday today, we were 94% done, 2% in process and 4% remaining, I think. Uh, but more to your question, uh, it is the superintendent's expectation that uh, each of us in our departments do our part to forecast and plan as, as best we can. So yes, we used uh, ESSER money to replace Wi-Fi access points in many of our buildings and also to buy Chromebooks. That would have been 14 months ago in July 1, trying to do the math, 22 I guess in advance. And we were also the first people in the state to know that we were getting a new assessment. So we had some advance notice. <laughs> Couldn't do anything with it. <laughs> Forget about that. Um, um, again, congratulations. Thank you. All right, guys. Anything else for Ray? All right, moving right along. White River Valley Policy Committee Board Civility and Code of Ethics Policy. Um, we just voted on that to move it out of committee and to the full board and prospective boards to look at um, in hopes that it will be move along and go through for adoption. We were thinking August timeline. If, but So we would like everyone to take a look at it, email any feedback to Jamie or myself and so we can make sure we get those, he can get, get those changes in. Um, and we will entertain any questions if you've had a chance to look at that policy. And I know there were some changes that were made. Do you want to highlight those, Jamie? Yeah, sure. So um, based on the feedback we received from Eric Lopez uh, through the Stratford board, you'll see that it makes this, um, it clearly starts to define in paragraph three that board members shall um, act within their scope of their official role where before it talked about they would commit. Um, so it really speaks to when you become a board member here, the policy is that you shall act this way. Um, and so that, uh, the policy committee last month determined would strengthen the policy. Um, and then based on feedback that we received through the White River Unified District Board and specifically through board chair Andrew Jones, there were some changes made to the complaints of board civility and code of ethics that gives the board some more, um, I guess they can differentiate in regards to how they may act if they find that someone um, has um, violated the policy. And so the tools that it provides is not just censure, censure um, but it, the board can um, also pros, could decide to formally request that a person resign. Um, and that this language, and Andrew can speak to it further, is based out of the language that um, corresponds with the VSBA Code of Ethics as a way for the board to handle a possible violation of the Code of Ethics within their um, essential tools manual. Essential tools, yes. Correct, Andrew? Yeah, that's right. I was, along with the, uh, that they had kind of a sample um, model policy and so I, I'd taken kind of the the steps from that and just adapted it to kind of our situation and it seemed like they had a good model policy and that it gave some discretion as to you know if there is a complaint depending on the severity there's different steps and then depending on the severity um, and then it if once you decide whether you want to, you know, hold the hearing at the board level, then there's some different options for what can happen. So it seemed like it was well fleshed out. So I thought it would be good to put that in. I haven't read this. I apologize for that. But there was conversation at the Stratford board um, several times about um, people who make complaints complaints, and um, the right for the, the, the board member to be able to um, see the person. So uh, 
whether it's virtually or in person, uh, for that person for for that person to be visible to the um, to the to the board, you know, to the board that's that's hearing it. Is that in there at all? No, it it says the person can actually just issue a written complaint to the board. It doesn't actually say they have to come forward to the board with so their if complaint. There's a hearing. What happens then? The board could just take up the written complaint. It says. Okay. Any other questions, guys? And and definitely think. Go ahead, Bill. I thought that's an interesting point. Uh, my question is, uh, back in the day, um, members of my team would come over for a while and say, hey, we're going out with a bunch of um, people. It, it, it could be somebody that does business with the, the town or the city, whatever the case may be. And uh, they want to pay for a round of golf. Or somebody says, hey, can I go out with a, a vendor? And they pay for my my lunch or my cup of coffee. So I think back in Massachusetts, there was kind of a, 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 fine, a, a dollar limit on how you to define that, um, that amount. Uh, a certain Supreme Court justice seems to have stretched that a bit, but is there a, a law like that or, re, or regulations in Vermont? And how do we handle, you know, just the person just wants to pay the tab. Is that okay? Or is that a de minimis? Um, so I'm seeking clarification rather than pointing, suggesting a point of view on this. We have a policy on it, Bill. Okay. And it says zero. That's current policy. Coincidence or not, that was my policy too. And um, it just keeps it nice and easy. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's handled separately than this. Yep. Thank you, Jane. All right, guys, anything else on the this policy? We'll be watching for the feedback. And if we don't see any, Jamie will move it forward to to right, go for the, the number of readings it requires um, to get it warned and approved. All right, um, right we're evaluating the superintendent evaluation committee. Superintendent 2324 professional goals. So the superintendent evaluation committee worked with Jamie and we've came up, came up with a set of goals for, um, for the 23-24 school year. And we'd like you to take a look at them and then we would also like to act and approve them if it is the flavor of the group tonight. So we can get them into Jamie's formal evaluation. Do you guys, has, have people had a chance to take a look at them? Do people have questions about them? This is a really Would easy. Like a motion to approve? Yes, ma'am. If nobody has any questions or any question they would like to have. So I make a motion to approve the superintendent's evaluation goals as uh, written. A second. All right. Is there any discussion? All right. Just can I just because not some board members are new. I just before you vote, I wanted to just go through the process we do mm -hmm. for new members. So uh, just so and, and current members. So just so everyone knows, I I receive feedback from all of our board members on leadership proficiencies that are identified by the VSBA and, and all the uh, admin team members that um, I serve. So our principal, central office administrators. That data is compiled. It's then shared with the evaluation committee, which has membership on each of your boards. We then, they meet, they review the results with the VSBA. I then come and meet with them we talk about what areas might we want to uh, further focus on or revise from the current professional goals I have. Then they worked on um, their thoughts around that. I drafted up some goals. We then met for an hour 
again last Thursday, the committee and myself, um, to combine our thoughts, and that's how we get to this document. I just wanted folks to know there's, there's, that's the process we use to get to here. And Jamie, I would just add to that, it's, it's the survey that comes out right around um, March time um, that, that is where we compile this information. So not everybody uh, filled it out. So we need your input on, on this. So when you get it, even if you're leaving the board, um, it's really important that you give that information because you have ex at least a, a year or two of experience on the board yeah. to add into that. And that's really important for us to have for us to have that information. Thank you, Sarah. Very good point. Um, Michael. Um, so I'm I'm curious um, when I look at the language in one um, a recommended actions for 23 24 the very first one is meter exceed uh student achievement goals and targets and then if you read the rest of the language produce 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 recommend work with develop uh collaborate continue i it's not that i don't want to see us continue to set um goals that we're trying to achieve um I have some reservations about telling the superintendent we have to meet or exceed certain goals uh, in terms of the pressure that that implies. And I'm just curious, Jamie, about your thoughts about that. And I think you know me well enough to know that I'm interested in seeing us um, do a better job and have the kids succeed. But that language to me is not consistent with the rest of the document. I just have a question about that. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Um, um, so, so and the, and the board, board can certainly, certainly speak to this as well. This, this was that task was included after the board adopted um, those benchmark achievement goals um, last fall. So yep. then it was included as part of my professional goals and my senses to create an emphasis on us meeting that goal. Um, I don't want to speak for the board. My senses is that once we produce social emotional goals and targets, that they're probably going to expect us then to, to meet, meet or exceed, exceed those. those. But, but I'd, I'd be curious, curious to how the, how the board, board feels. feels. I appreciate the question. Um, we, we also did talk about um, the importance of keeping the board abreast of all these and that I would, I would say, say to the board, board and I had said that to the VIS to the, to the, to the committee, committee, that, that some, of some of these actionable tasks are stretch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's, a there's a lot here. Right? And our strategic plan is a stretch plan, the work we're trying to do. Um, and, and so, so those would be, would be my, my, my answers to that, to that question, Michael. Bill? Yeah, Bill? I, I, I would just end by saying that as a academic leader for a few years in the past, I, I want to make sure that we're encouraging you and the faculty and staff in the schools to do the best they can without having administrative people pressure leaning on people to do something that's outside of a reasonable expectation, because then it, the, the net result is counterproductive. And so how we assess that and balance that, I think is going to be an interesting job for all of us on the board. Um, and I just want to raise that as a concern now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Mike. I think those are very good points. Um, a couple comments. First of all, the language, the, the actual goals that were adopted by um, the SU board, um, the goals and, um, and the language came at our request of the superintendent to develop goals, to be able to monitor and hopefully uh, get the best we can out of our kids within a certain period of time. That's a definition of a goal or an objective. So, and by definition, um, goals need to be worked out with, in this case, the superintendent. Um, and so this wasn't done absence of, of Jamie saying it can be done. He also mentioned the word stretch. And I use the term sometimes back as kind of risk. We go after goals that are risky in the sense that we might not be able to achieve them. Why are they important is that with a, a foundation of trust and teamwork, an organization can 
can achieve more than sometimes they even believe that they can achieve. And if it wasn't for that stretch goal once in a while, we might not be gotten there so quickly. But the underlying that is the teamwork and trust. And if, if staff felt that we were just trying to shove something down their throat and looking for an excuse to, um, to have them come out and hang out and dry, um, the whole goal setting process would be a farce. Uh, we don't have that here. And we're blessed by having a really good team. And we work these things out together. And I think, quite honestly, every series of goals, there should be some stretches in there. Um, it isn't like my goal is I'm going to show up at work and uh, put in an eight hour day. So um, I, I, I think it, your comment is well taken. I think we've got the building blocks of trust, teamwork, um, and an organization that can achieve, in some places in Vermont, the unachievable. And um, I'd love to see us be there first. And we're on that path and the goal setting is helping us get there. So, 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 Michael, I would say that since we started this process with the VSBA and the goal setting and um, the way we're doing the evaluation process now, each each year that we've done it, we've set these goals and we've talked about them at the end. And it, if if so, one of these some of these goals may be goals from that we're expanding upon from last year. So I don't I don't think we're trying to set expectations that are unrealistic because I don't believe in doing that either, but I think that we like to get them on there so we so it's more of a where we want to end up. Um not put too much pressure on Jamie to get this all done in a year. We know sometimes it's going to take more than one year to accomplish the goal. So it's not I don't does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. And I I don't think we're on a different page. Um and and I'm, I'll just stop now. I, I think I would reward that a little differently in the future, and I'll just throw my two cents in in the future. So okay. Um, so I don't I, I don't want to uh, derail the conversation. I, I just want to point that out for the record because I think I'll raise it again. Yeah. No. And I think it's a really important conversation <laughs> to have. Um, I put put a lot. Of, I think we put a lot of effort into this process to make sure we do a good job. So I, I think any and all feedback is welcome. Um, Dustin? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm, of course, new, so I'm still coming up to speed on a lot of this stuff. And, uh, but yeah, I like how uh, these goals, I do appreciate that they are uh, tangible. You know, like that's one of the, we get cold sweats. You know, I work at Hitchcock. You know, we have to come up each year, that time where we had to come up with our goals for the, for the year. Um, and then we come up with the tangible ones. And, one of the things that we have to do is actually uh, we have to check our progress uh, every now and then. So uh, do we have things in place to, so that we can, you know, support you in these goals? Like, are there um, progress points that we check uh, that we can, you know, uh, have checkpoints? Checkpoints. Yeah, I mean, I think part of that is of how I'm, I look at it part of my my monthly reports to you guys, Dustin, should be hitting on these topics, right? And so that my written reports are progress monitoring these areas. Um, and then, you know, what we did last year was the board actually aligned their goals to support the superintendent's goals. So the, the and when you're going to talk about your current goals here in a little bit around progress monitoring those. And so um, what I would say is, is that I think that that has felt, as Bill was alluding to, is that it's not just, these are not just the work of the superintendent. These are the work of the organization um, and um, certainly the work of the board because the board aligned their work to support the, the superintendent's work in pursuing this. Um, and it's also why I thought that I think the first line is so important Um within these these proposed goals is that it's you know it speaks to that the superintendent's professional goals are aligned in support of the work articulated in the strategic plan so i think it's important that we are really framing all of our work that that strategic plan is guiding the work forward of the su and so there's really not anything within these goals that i don't believe you would see a close link to within our strategic plan and so I, and then I think it's even more powerful when the full board looks at these goals, looks at our strategic plan, and they commit to goals as a board 
that are supporting that work of both of those things. All right. So, did, do we have a motion? Yeah, we were at discussion. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other discussion on we the goals? A second. Yeah. All right. So, um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Any nays? All right, so, so moved. The superintendent goals are approved. Thank you, everyone. I only have a couple more gray hairs now. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. And, and I do want to say that for the, for the for the process of the the work that we do with the VSBA on this, um, the the review and evaluation process. It was excellent for Jamie, and it was we got really great feedback from all the people that filled it out. But Sarah's right; we really need all the boards to, to get on board. And it's it's um, sometimes you're not sure, but or sometimes you get that email. We're going to try to make sure we send it for more individual board members instead of from the BSBA, so it doesn't get lost in the inbox. But it's it's really important to have everybody's feedback so that um, we know we're in, going in the right direction, and it helps Jamie a lot. All right. Um, review progress monitoring board goals. So discussion, review and progress monitoring of 2223 Wright River Valley SU's board goals. Who's next? Do you want me to facilitate this? Yeah. So um, this was a request by Bill. Bill, did you have anything to add before I start the conversation? Talking about the the board goals for this for this year. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, it's as um, several of you have mentioned, the goal setting process um, was a collaborative one between the um, the superintendent's evaluation committee and then the full board and the superintendent, and um, it was it, it, the logical and essential piece of that process is to have board goals so that the superintendent is aware of and is in basically moving in the direction the board wants. So it's an opportunity for us to, to articulate the important areas we want to focus on, emphasize on, improve, hold the line, whatever the case is. It could be fiscally, it could be facilities management and operations, it could be academics or social emotional. And so we did that, and many of the goals uh, that were adopted by this board um, reflected the goals of the superintendent, because even though he's carrying them out with his team, he needs the support, guidance, and assistance of the SU board and the district boards if he's going to succeed. So it's a very logical linkage, and what you're looking at is what was uh, voted on um, last year. And... Um, Part of the process is if we're going to hold the, the superintendent accountable in his teams, we should hold ourselves accountable. And so I don't know how much time we have, it, uh, Kathy, and I don't know whether you want to have this as a conversation or it lead to some sort of action, um, but it, it speaks to how did we do and where did we fall short and those things get us thinking because very soon from now, whether we do it in a retreat or early next year, we need to establish goals for this next coming academic year. So it's a very important step in this process. So I'll turn it back. I've got some, some comments on how we did, but uh, I just wanted to delay the framework first and give it back to Kathy. So what I, what I was going to suggest to the board is, is that, um, I think the tool that we use to monitor my goals allows board members to think through, provide comments, and rate the goals of the superintendent. I was curious to the board's thoughts about us developing a Google form for you that we would send out, similar rating scale that we use to measure my goals, to collect board member rating and feedback on your own goals, and that we would have that data collected 
in in a in a ready to use form when you go into your board board retreat. So that was a possible idea that I was going to offer as how you might consider progress monitoring to this. Doesn't mean you can't discuss some of them now, but I I'm curious to your thoughts around if that would be helpful. I think that's a really good idea, actually, Jamie. <laughs> I think that gives people an opportunity to, to take time and think about it and respond. Sarah? Uh, I, I agree, too. I think it, then it would be a good uh, uh, jump off place for, for discussion to have that data. Um, and then the, I think the discussion would, would not be so random. So mm -hmm. I would agree with what Jamie just proposed. I didn't mean to do that again. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, is this something, Jamie, you, we could produce here? How would we get, how would this? I'll, I'll take care of the survey and okay. getting it out to folks. I'm just, I was looking, I've only heard from a couple, like I'm just looking, is there a census from the board? Like, can we do a straw poll or that can idea? I kind of get, can I get a thumbs up on, from the board members that are, are feeling like this is a good, good idea and a way to, to do this? Looks like everybody, right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, this is a great idea. This is a great. And it gives people a chance to like think through and um, give some good feedback. I think instead of trying to do it on the fly at a meeting, and then we can talk about that at a meeting. All right, so I'll I'll work to get a survey put together and out to board members with a cover letter of the why, because not every board member is here tonight. Um, by the end of next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So, um, Weber Valley full board retreat date, time, focus of meeting. Um, we we had a full board retreat last year. It went I, the it went really well. There wasn't a huge. We didn't get a huge turnout. Um, we got a fairly size turnout but we could have done better sort of like with the superintendent survey um, but we had some focus and some icebreakers and things that really um, made it a pretty good meeting so we'd like to start getting some ideas on dates that we could do this um, we picked a I think it was a weeknight we did it right we did it on a weeknight last time um, and we did it at um, the high school any thoughts? Um, is it something we want to do right after the board reorgs? Do we want to do it at before, at like in June before um, we all take off for the summer, or do we want to do it when we come back? What are people's thoughts? I think that doing it in the summer um, allows for you know. Um, I don't know what people's work schedule are, but t but sometimes it tends to, to allow for a longer period of time so that we can really flush out some things that we need, that we uh, have the time to do that. So, um, so I would go, and I think maybe August would be better than June because June gets so tied up with graduation and, and end of the year stuff. And um, uh, not that August isn't busy too, but um, those are my thoughts. But I do it anytime anybody's available. I would do it anytime too, and I I think August would work work well. Selfishly, because June is going to be crazy for for our family. So <laughs> <laughs> I agree for a lot of families. <laughs> All right. So, do we want to work on an August date? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I've had not success. Not, I haven't had. I have not had great success when I've sent out doodle polls to board members. We tried that last year, and we got held up a bit. So, um, what a, what does the board feel like if we were early in advertising and we said we were going to take the August SU date? I'm just using it as an example, right? Mm -hmm. That everyone's typically accustomed to going to. 
and we said we were going to lengthen that and make it into a retreat. Or we, we move that, like, I'm just thinking instead of asking the full board to come out twice, if we said we're going to have an August meeting, but it's going to be longer and it's going to be a retreat. And we start communicating to that to folks sooner rather than later. Tammy, what times are you thinking? I mean, I school starts for me <laughs> on the twenty second, which is the next full board meeting in August. Um, so, I mean, what what times did you have in the past? I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't there. I think you did come, Tammy. Actually, we did it in the evening. We did. If I'm remembering right, in February, we started at like 5, and I think we went to 8 or 8.30, and we had dinner. Yeah. Am I remembering correctly? Folks remember at Royalton? It was definitely into the, it, we, we didn't, we started after school was out that yeah. night. Yeah, I think it was. I would say it was 5, 5-ish that we started. It couldn't have been because I, I wouldn't have gotten there until like quarter of 6. So I think it started at 6 o'clock. Well, people came in late, but, you know, or after we had started, too. I don't know if you were one of them, but. No, um, I was there before anybody else. Oh. <laughs> so I just, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, but I maybe do some kind of survey, Jamie. I don't know, after we've restructured. Um, I don't know. Jamie, what about the 15th, which would be the third Tuesday? Um that has board meetings happening. Right now, the second Tuesday is open. I can do the second Tuesday. So can I. What day is like that? The... Eight. Eight. I'm okay with that, but I do like the idea of doing it during our regular slotted time towards the end of August. Well, well, I could narrow a poll down to two dates. All right. At <laughs> times, we could offer the eighth in a regular meeting and just see what we get the most. Does that Sounds work? good. Yeah. All right. So you're going to have a survey and a doodle poll come into your inbox. Your job is to make sure you respond to both and tell your fellow board members to also check their inbox and respond to both. <laughs> Or you don't get dinner at the retreat. That's right. No dinner. <laughs> dinner was really Those good. Cookies are fantastic. That is that you get put in timeout. Right? <laughs> we actually played, what game did we play? We played a game too. It was fun. So you can have games and food and get to hang out with some pretty cool people. What more can you ask for? Um, all right. So electric bus rebate program. Yeah. So I just wanted to give the board an update because we haven't talked about it for a while that our work as an SU um, around, remember we received funding through the EPA through an electric bus rebate program uh, for $60,000 in infrastructure to provide a charging stations to support three electric vehicles across the S SU. Um, and then they would, re they would provide us um, funding for three buses. So we've of course switched contracted service providers um, and one of the things of this rebate program is that we needed to be able to demonstrate to the EPA that we had taken three current diesel buses off the road. Um, and so we wanted to make certain that we were working in conjunction with our new transportation uh, provider to be able to do that. We're feeling like that's going to be fine, that they're going to be able to take three diesel buses off the road. And then Tara and I... Um, have been working with the EPA. We did get an extension um, not to request payment for the um, vehicles because we haven't placed an order yet. Um, we requested an extension till December to make certain we had all the infrastructure worked out, that it was gonna be covered by the grant, that we knew that electric vehicles were gonna be supporting three runs and that one of the things that we're working with the EPA in it with is they find that the rating for electric buses in colder states. Uh, for example, uh, Thomas buses, their range load, uh, I'm just throwing this out. Don't, don't, I'm not saying this is accurate, is 120 miles without needing a charge. 
that in the cold months that that can go down as as low as 60. We could lose half. And so where we're at currently right now is working with our new transportation provider around mapping out our routes, providing that with the t with the technical support at the EPA to ensure that electric vehicle would be able to actually navigate our routes in the cold months. And also right now we are working, Tara's working to set up site visits with Green Mountain Power um, to work in conjunction with them to seek out where is the charging infrastructure making the most sense based on the 60,000 we have. We're looking to pursue um, building mounted charging structures. They're level two. I'm already learning more. I wouldn't be able to say level two to you a month ago. So they're level two charging um, stations, which you can also use with an electric car is what I've learned. Um, and so what we're looking to do is walk with Green Mountain Power, make certain we have the infrastructure, which has to do with the, the actual like transformers that feed our buildings and then our panel boxes within our buildings. So we need Green Mountain Power to help us with that to make certain we have the capacity. Ideally, if you remember, we were looking to pursue the electric vehicles in Stratford and Sharon. And so we're only running two large buses there next year. So that would take two of them. And then the other site that we're contemplating right now is possibly in Stockbridge, just because the bus is parked in front of that school all the time. And so having a a infrastructure right there made a lot of sense um, and based on the scope of their route. So we're feeling like those are the three areas where we could launch the electric vehicles looking through the lens of the length of the route and the ability to have the infrastructure in place. So that's the update I have at this point. Tara probably can tell you what I missed. Um, and then I'm going to invite, I mentioned this in my written report, um, Stacey Emerson, who's the general manager for Student Transportation of America, because they have implemented electric buses in Barrie. They were one of the first districts in the state to implement electric vehicle. And I think there's just been some lessons learned through that process that I want her to share with the board um, next month. And then the board could ask even more questions. Um, because they have been maintained, it, it's been a few years for them now. So they've been able to handle maintenance and things of that nature. So I just, those are where we're at with next steps. I didn't want the board thinking that this just stopped. We're continuing to work on it. Amy, what is the dollar figure on this uh, rebate program? Yeah, Tara, yeah, do, do you remember that figure? That figure? 1.2 million. 1.2 million. Thank you. I did not, I did have, not have that figure off the top of my head. I knew it was, I knew it was one, one something. All right. All right. Thank you, Thank for, you that for that update. update. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. okay. Water Valley, Valley SU Fuel and, and propane, propane contract, contract for 2324. 2324. So I've continued to work with competitive, competitive Energy, who is the buying group that we utilize to obtain our fuel oil and propane pricing. And currently, the range that we are working with for propane is $1.40 to $1.52 per gallon. And for oil, it's $2.80 to $2.92 per gallon. So I would like you to take action if you're willing to accept a contract for up to $1.52 per gallon for propane and up to $2.92 per gallon for fuel oil. So we can lock in early and get these great prices. Do I have a motion? So what Tara just said. <laughs> Second. Oh. Is there, is there discussion on the motion? Tara, how does that compare to this year? Quite a bit better? Much better, yes. Yeah, it should be. Great. We had budgeted in most, air, most um, like $4 a gallon for fuel oil, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other discussion? All right, hearing no other discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Aye.
Thank you. Any nays? Thank you. All right, hearing none, the ayes have it. Thank you very much, Tara. All right, and we are on to public comment. Is there any public comment? See, we have a few people on now. One more chance for public comment. Resignations, new hires. Uh, Annette put in her report. We do have um, some special educators who are not going to be returning um, next year. She highlighted those names in her written report for you. Um, but and then she also did make um, a hire that she talked about in her report. You want to talk about that? Real yeah. Quick? So, um, so Jennifer um, is going to be replacing Diane Doubleday um, as an occupational therapist. Um, and Jennifer comes um, from the Wilder School um, in the Harford School District, um, and she has prior experience also as a PE teacher. Um, so she, she comes with a wealth of experience in OT, and so we're really excited to, um, to have her. She'll be a great addition um, to the team. Um, she'll be working in um, the South Railton and Sharon campuses um, next year where Diane Doubleday was currently um, serving students. And Diane's retiring. And Diane's after retiring after June. How many years? Oh my gosh. Uh, Decades? Yes. Yeah. Decades. So, I, I, yes. yeah, I want to thank Full all time. the staff members who are mm. leading us for all yeah. their service and put a special shout out oh, to Diane amazing. Doubleday who's retiring after decades mm. of service. Um, to RSU and to the students mm -hmm. um, in her role as an occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any other business? Next meeting is Tuesday, June 27th at 6 p.m. And if there's anything else. Motion to adjourn, except for Bill just raised his hand. <laughs> I know, but Kathy skipped over 13, which is future agenda items, and I was going to suggest two. One is our retreat. That's important. We want to do it. And the second one is board goals. Important. We want to do it. So I think that would be both of those would be appropriate for future agenda items to, to, to see how we're doing. Okay. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Perfect. All right. <laughs> second the uh, motion to adjourn <laughs> <laughs> all right all right thank you guys thanks good job thank Jeffy. all right good job everybody nice job.